Witcher Tale. Written and produced by Alonzo Dean Cole. and make it nice and dark, we'll get right down to business. Draw up to the fire and gaze into them buds. Gaze into them deep. And soon you'll see the hands of time turn back for a year. Soon you'll be up in the ocean off the Cape of Good Hope that's down in Africa. There, upon the stormy waters, rolls a ship whose captain's name is Vanderdecken. That's his name now. <laughs> but soon he'll be called by sailor men the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> the Flying Dutchman. <laughs> Now he would command the elements. If he'd insist on soon, would all dead men? I say we mutiny 
I can see you not a fool. No man of his arm. His belt is filled with loaded pistols. And he will not hesitate to kill. Think ye the old priest we have a passenger could bring him to his senses? Nay, hey, but now you have the captain said his will was gone. The presence of God's priest would but inflame his mind the more. Hey, the priest has come on deck. Look there. I give thee greetings, son. Holy oh, fathers of lover's life, get thee again below. Aye, before Jan van der Decken and his fight on thee. Get to the wind, Captain. Get to the wind. Miss Father, he returns. Nay, my sons, I fear not thy bitter Captain. <laughs> so the man of God hath crawled on deck. You see me. Greetings to thee, my Herr van der Decken. My priest, how to slight the winds thy master sends this evening. How like thee, his empty thunders. <laughs> Say and watch me best the storm he sends. Watch me round this cape against his will. Four days have I watched and seen thee fail. I will fail no longer. I shall win my way tonight. Only he can win who striveth by faith. Ah, faith I have. Faith in myself alone. No man can live by and for himself alone. Ah, who shall he live for then? Another man who is selfish of himself? I know a man. I know my kind. Perhaps he should put faith in women. <laughs> the best of them are devils from their cradles. But thou didst me have faith in God. <laughs> he is the greatest lie of all. He's great. No more. My blasphemy is what God is all. He will. His voice cries to thee from the storm, last man. It bids thee fall upon thy knees and pray his pardon. Say ye so, and hear the voice of John Van der Decken answer. By the servant shall I show in what contempt I hold the master. Walk thee to the rail, priest, for thou art going by the board. Oh, the the of God, stop yeah. and back. I shoot the man who moves the hand. Oh, I sweep not thy lives for mine, my son. Ah, to the rail, and stand until I throw thee to the sea. But first... Thou art who art supposed to reign above, hark to my defiance. The life of this thy servant shall be to thee my challenge. Oh, 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 I am out of thunder. I laugh at thy impotent rage. Oh, 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 hear me, God. Despite thee and all thy heaven, I shall kill thy man. I shall set thy storm. I shall round thy cursed cake. Oh! Thou wouldst teach him love, 
Thou too must sail upon this ghostly bark, a living man amongst the dead. I am ready. I go with thee, son. And flesh and blood, thou givest me the life I would have taken from thee. Oh, foolish soul. And thou didst say all living creatures were selfish as thyself. Thy curse was to be eternal. But this good man's sacrifice has won thee again to hope of heaven. I shall not have to sail. Thou shalt sail upon yon bark as I have said. But once, each seven years, thy phantom ship may touch a port, and thou, for the space of a single moon, may seek for love thyself and cleanse thy soul of pride. Oh. Come, my son. I know. Seven years among the dead, ever flying into the game, and then a port for a single moon. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Two hundred years and eighty on the deathly ship of death, ever flying into the gale. Thirty times and nine have I been in port for a single moon. And now the hour draws nigh when I shall rest on shore again. And bitterness is in thy soul, John. Thy heart is filled with plans of evil for thy visit amongst men. Aye, I shall employ this moon ashore to bring dishonor, death, destruction on my part. No, have the centuries of suffering taught thee nothing? And by example of thy God, they have taught me how to hate. For I have endured his awful vengeance. Oh, vengeance on thee has never been his purpose. His plan is thy regeneration. Oh, so this loving father destroys his son with a curse of living death to save him. Uh, oh, cease thy lying sophistry. My centuries of pain have confirmed the truth I knew of old. That love is but a lie, and that self is all that matters. Yet for two hundred years and eighty, I have been thy comrade on this phantom ship of death. And how at first I was deluded by that comrade ship of thine. I believe it was love that made thee share my awful fate. Ah, but my brain at last searched out the truth. That which is worse than death to me meant to thee but longer than life. Thou art old, about to die. Thy seeming sacrifice has let thee live almost three centuries beyond thy span. Poor John, I pity thee. How more than blind are they who will not see? Oh, pity me not. Listen, priest. Thirty times and nine now have I gone ashore. For one brief fleeting moon in each long seven years. Each time I have been humble, seeking that love which now I know does not exist. Everywhere I found distrust and looks and fear. For though men knew not that I am here, they call the flying Dutchman. They sense I am a being set apart. I am of the dead who live. And in mine eyes, men see the horror stamped by centuries of pain. Thirty times and nine, I sought for love and found but hate. And now I shall employ my moon ashore to pay. Our phantom ship draws into port. Again for a moon, I join the world of men who worship their revengeful God. And I shall bring dishonor. Death, destruction in my path. Dost hear me, God of vengeance? I go ashore to pay thee for my curse. I go ashore to pay. <laughs> Next time I have a birthday, Satan, we'll tell folks what the flying Dutchman did when he went ashore the fortieth time. <laughs> and produced by Alonzo Dean Cole.
And now let us join old Nancy and Satan, her wise black cat. Hannah, I'm three year old I be today. Yes, sir, going on a hundred and four. Now, if you folks will just douse out them lights, we'll spin you the finish of our yarn about that famous sailor man we begun the last time you were here. Yeah. That's right, Satan. We told how that fellow Vanderdecken, for his blasphemy against his lord, was condemned to sail the seas until his selfish soul is cleansed by love, which he's allowed to come ashore and look for once each seven years. We'll serve the help him in his search. A good old priest volunteered to share his curse, but his help didn't do much good. For when we left them, uh, but, but draw up to the fire and gaze into them, hear for yourselves, just how we left this Vanderdecken. <laughs> Thirty-five and nine now have I come ashore. For one brief fleeting moon in each long seven years. Thirty times and nine I sought for love and found but hate. And now I shall employ my moon ashore to bring dishonor, death, destruction in my path. Dost hear me, God of vengeance? I go ashore to pay thee for my curse. I go ashore. <laughs> now gaze into them was deep and hear the finish of our yarn about the flying Dutchman. <laughs> the flying Dutchman. <laughs> <laughs> Even such an old sea dog as you can't believe the fork of the yarn of the flying Dutchman. Now, out there in Portsmouth Harbor lies my proof. That ship's a Dutchman's or I ain't a mother's son. No, Uncle Henry. You <laughs> merely say that because it's a dingy-looking old hulk you didn't see come in last night. I tell you, no one saw that ship come in. And I tell you, I recognize it. For an I-300 year, every sailor man upon the seven seas has seen that black two-decker fly by him at least once. It did come. I've seen it. Cross our bows like lightning. Backwards. Would ever stay and fail, straight out again a gale. Or we on a human ship couldn't even smell a breeze. Are you sure you hadn't been sampling the ship's rum barrel when you saw all that? Yes, oh, yes I am. <laughs> if, 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 if that out there is a national ship, why don't we see hide her hair, a better living creature, on its rails around the yard? Oh, oh, look, Uncle Henry. There's a small boat coming from our fourth side now. Oh, I'll be... Now, when did they launch that? Why, you were so busy talking. Man, there's two men in it. Two living men is all the ghost ship carries. <laughs> but neither of those men of their clothing look three centuries old. And you say that's the flying Dutchman, Jane. Yeah, the Dutchman don't go any older. That's part of his curse. And neither does the priest who travels with him. He gets new clothes when they come to shore every seven years. They mean to land about here, I think. Well, I'm leaving before they do. You and Judy better come, too. Nonsense. No, all right. But I'm a warning you to have nothing to do with a big fella coming in that small boat. Henry, such superstition is unchristian-like. To show you what I think of your ridiculous fears, I'm going to invite those men to be my guests. What? Peter Cooper, you're going to take them into your house? If they care to come. You don't know what you're saying. <laughs> Why, the Dutchman's a holy devil. You make me hope that big man in the boat is your flying Dutchman, Uncle Henry. He sounds interesting. Indeed, he does. <laughs> they're, they're, they're landing, Tom. And, and, and I'm a-going before the Dutchman's eyes light on me. <laughs> oh, he's a prize, and I tell you. Oh, look at Uncle Henry Ross. My superstitious credibility almost discourages me with you in time. Here the strangers come. Speak to him, Papa. Oh, good morning, gentlemen. Greetings, Judy, friend. Hi, greetings. Why did thou not run at my approach? Run? Why should we run? Yeah, uh, that companion did. Oh, and he, he, he had an appointment elsewhere. Uh, gentlemen, as your strangers and our thought ravines are not of the best, I wish to invite you to be my guest. I guess. We thank thee truly, but... Well, do not hesitate. I'm only an humble minister, but my daughter and I will strive to make you comfortable. Thou art a minister? A man of God? Yes. And thou art his daughter? Yes. <laughs> a minister and his child. He thanks thee, sir, but my comrade and I cannot... Uh, I guess... Say, we can, we shall. I thank thee, worthy servant of the Lord. I accept 
my invitation gladly. John, thou must not abuse the hospitality of this good man's house. Thou must not harm his child. I have merely suggested that she take a walk with me this afternoon. I know thou meanest wrong to her because she is the daughter of a man who serves the God you hate. I shall warn her and her father. Tell them who and what thou really art. Listen, fool. The tale of the flying Dutchman they call but idle superstition. Thou wilt tell these people nothing. For they will not believe thee till I prove the words which thou wilt say, and then it will be too late. Captain, are you ready for a war? Aye, I come to thee, my child. Farewell, priest. There I am back again for seven years of living death. To the god of hate who hath condemned me, I have a sacrifice to me. I should one die among these trees and thickets, it might be many months ere their body was found. What made you think of such an awful thing as that? The thought of wow one who was left alive. A father, for instance, might suffer long and keenly ere his, uh, child's, for instance, fate was known. If I were lost, it would kill my father. But of course, nothing will happen to me with you here to protect me. Thou dost trust me. Of course I trust you. Thou art a child. Thy purity enables thee to read men's hearts. That's what my father said. And I know your heart is good. Because in one whose eyes show such unhappiness, any evil that was there before must have been completely burned away. Oh, little fool. What would they think if I taught thee different? Stop acting as though you meant to frighten me, Captain. And sit down on this log. I... Come. I'm tired. <laughs> I sit close beside thee. Uh, thou hast never shown fear of me as thou Why should do. I show fear of you? Uh, no reason. Except that people always do. Captain. I think someone ought to talk to you. Of what? Yourself. I don't think you know yourself at all. No, that think it's not. I think you're the sort of man who thinks he's awfully bad and who tries to be bad, all because he's afraid to let folks see what's really underneath. So? Yes. You're exactly like a little boy who lives next door to us. When he's outside in the garden, he's always playing at being Indian and scalping people. Yet I've seen him through the window of his room at night. When he thinks he's all alone, fondling his sister's dog. Thou sayest I resemble him? Exactly. I've seen him stand out in the rain when the lightning flashed and thunder roared just to prove how brave he is. When all the time I knew he wanted to hide his head in his mother's lap and cry with fear. You're exactly like him, underneath. Well, I... So that's just the way he glares at me. Oh, little fool, I... He's rude and ill mannerly just as you are. I... How long since you've seen your mother, Captain? Well, I... I'm never sore. Have any sisters? Nay. Ever married? Nay. In law? Nay. That explains everything. You've never been brought up? What? You've had no one but dog to go to with your trouble. No wonder your eyes show such unhappiness. For God must seem awfully far away sometimes to one who has no other friend. No other friend. No other friend. Uh, yes, he is. Awfully far away. How secluded this place is. One will ask here, they never would be found. Well, Captain, why don't you kill me as you planned? Yes. I wasn't very afraid. You see, I know the little boy next door. <laughs> Playing Indian. Scalping people. 
Suppose you put your, suppose you put your head in my lap and have a cry. Why? He does sometimes when no one else is near. Why? Seems to help. I don't think you've cried in a long, long time. Why? Why? Give thy foolish child. Father, forgive thy foolish child. Farewell, Judith. Goodbye, Captain. I hate to see you gentlemen go. Your fortnight here has brought us happiness. My ship awaits, Mr. Cooper. I cannot tarry longer. But my old friend here will stay ashore with thee. John, my son! This voyage I take alone. Thou wilt share my punishment no longer. Thou hast found us, Lord! I have found myself. I don't understand you, gentlemen. My comrade may explain when I am gone. And now, ere I bid a last farewell, Mr. Cooper, may... May I kiss thy daughter once, as a father on the brow. I will answer that, John. Kiss me as a lover on the lips. I, oh, I did not mean to speak. I do love thee, Judas, and love thee. And I love you. Oh, nay, child, love me not. Another will come to thee, one of thy age and goodness, one worthy of thy love. I want no one but you. But, John, take me with you on your heart. Nay, I cannot. Take thy arms from about me. I must go. Oh, no, John, come back. Farewell. Oh, John, wait. Your black ship is not ready. I see no sign of crew. They are waiting. Waiting for my coming. Oh, he's in the trouble. Leaving me. The ship flies through the waters by magic. Look, already he's reached the black ship's side. He's climbing up the ladder. He's aboard. Father, the sails of these black ship sails. Yet there's no wind. It's putting off the sea. Farewell, my son, my comrade. Come back to me, John. I love you. And I love thee. Farewell forever. No. Not forever. Ah! The ship is sinking. It's sinking beneath the waters. Listen. I love you. Love me. Oh, gracious Father, my prayers are answered. His long voyage is at an end. Thou hast taken back his soul. And now you see why the flying Dutchman is seed upon the seas no more. Well, that's the end of that, I'm frightened. (laughs) 